Hey guys, welcome back to the third episode of UDT Recreates. In this series, we're recreating the uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands drone. In this episode, we're going to be setting up our night vision functionality. Now, you may have seen this in previous tutorials. This one will be very similar. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started. So we're going to make settings, project settings. We're going to make ourselves another input, this time the night vision. Again, it will be under action mappings. I'm going to just call this one night vision. We're going to bind this to N. And then we'll go ahead and close that. We're going to come back into our BP drone. We're going to make two variables. First one being PP underscore night vision. I'm then going to set this to a, uh, what's it called? A post process settings. That's what it is. There we go. I'm going to compile that and I'm going to duplicate our one that we made just here. I'm going to call this one PP. Uh, let's go with default. And then compile. And then you're going to come under our PP night vision again. Okay, now once you're under here, there's a couple of different things we're going to need to do. So the first one will be under lens and then blue. We're then going to click the intensity button. I'm going to set this to full. I'm then going to close that and come under exposure. I'm going to turn exposure on. I'm going to set that to 2. I'm going to close that again. And then under image effects, we're going to turn all three of these on. I'm going to set the first one to 1. The second one, I'm going to set to 0.1. And the third one will set to 0.3. I'm then also going to come under color grading, miscellaneous. I'm going to turn that on. I'm then going to get a color. I'm going to be using. 027000FF to so give us a nice green. So, what all of these do is this gives us a green color, and then our first one here, Bloom, makes it so that the light will appear like brighter and will give it the actual night vision effect, same as exposure. And then our image effects, this one here will just make it so uh, there'll be like a circular kind of outline that'll be black, like on the borders of your screen. The grain jitter will make it so that the grain intensity that we've set here will make it so they are uh, the weird way of avoiding it. The grain intensity, sorry, will make it so there'll be little like dots like an old style TV when you've lost connection. And the grain jitter will make it so that those little dots will jitter about a bit. So that'll give us a nice little effect. Now there's a couple other things we're gonna need to do. We're gonna need to come under here and make a post process. And then I'm gonna call this one default post process and then under here I'm not sure if we need to edit anything uh we're gonna make it so that it all turns on automatically and then that should be it we can just leave everything as is okay so now we can go ahead and we can call upon our night vision that we set up earlier uh, so we go input action. Uh, oh, I put that click, that's why. Something I wasn't giving me it. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm inside of a function, that's why I can't call upon it. Oopsie. So if we come into our event graph, we can then call upon our night vision that we made earlier. I'm going to make a branch. And then with that branch, I'm going to make another variable. I'm going to call this is nv on. This is going to be a boolean. And we'll attach that. Uh, we're then going to get our default pp. I'm going to drag out and we're going to go set settings. And then our settings type for the first one will be our default. We can then connect that to true. And then we'll copy paste that, just delete the PP default we set up and put the night vision into it this time. Then put this here. We're then gonna get our boolean we just made. We're gonna set that twice and then connect that. Our first one we're gonna leave untick, the second one we will tick. And then we're gonna go ahead and comment on that. We're gonna call it night vision. 
So what's happening here is whenever we press our night vision button, it checks to see if it is already on. If it is already on, then it will set it to default, which will in turn turn off our night vision effect. And then if it isn't already on, it will turn our night vision effect on. And then it just makes sure that it sets it to uh, whether it should be on or on off. But that, that way, when it comes to here again, it will go to the opposite one. I don't know how well I explained that. I feel like that was pretty poor. But now you can see, when we're right now in our third person character, or I guess first person. Whenever I press N, it won't do anything, but if I come into my drone and press N now, it'll add this nice little night vision effect. Now you can see when I look at the sun, it's got a bit more bloom there. I'd recommend just playing around and testing this. Now the way the night vision works in games and in real life is that you have to actually have some lighting and then the night vision will then make it so that that light is brighter. So you have to mess around with this until you get it so that it works perfectly with your lighting. Now if you're doing some kind of nighttime game or some kind of game where you're in a forest or whatever, there'll be either the night, like a uh, sky kind of making lightness, lightness, like making light from the moon, or it'll be the sun making light during the day. So just mess around with those two until you get the preferred night vision setting. But now that we've set that up, one thing that we haven't got is a way to go from being inside of our drone back to our player. As you can see at the moment, I can press one, or I guess you can't see that, but I'm currently pressing one and I'm not going back to my character. Now that's an issue, so we're gonna have to set that up. So to do so, we're actually going to make this a function. Now this function will be under our drone. We're going to come back into here, we're going to come to our functions. We're going to call this switch back to player. I guess I should call that player character. And then once we're inside of there, we're going to set up a bunch of different things. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to destroy the actor, because once we're not using the drone and we're back to our player, we're no longer going to want that drone, because again, whenever we uh, create the drone, we're spawning a new one here, so we want to make sure we delete any old drones. We're going to remove all widgets, because if we already have widgets from our drone hug, we don't want them to carry over to our, our player character hug. And then I'm going to have to get a reference to my player character, so I'm going to go get Okay, so we now we have to get a reference to our character. Now, normally to do this, you would go cast a third person character, and then you go get the uh, get first sorry get player character. But because currently our player character is a drone, that won't work. We have to do get uh, actor of class, and then we will select our third person character. We would then uh, get our player controller. And then drag and get our possessed node again, and then connect that and put the inborn node to our third person character. Now from here, we also want to go ahead and we want to get our drone is active. I'm actually going to set that. Sorry. Then we will connect that there. And actually. Just for the sake of making it look a little clearer, I'm going to drag that down so you can see the line a bit better. And then from our get player controller, we're going to drag out and we're going to get reset ignore look and reset ignore move. And then we're going to go ahead and attach both of those. I'm actually going to delete that line and that one. I can leave that one actually. I'm going to double click on the line so I can create this little dot that I can drag around. I'm just going to go ahead and do another one and then attach it so it looks a bit neater. Uh, we now need to make sure that we create any UI. So currently we don't have a default UI, but if you guys have a UI for your character, this is where you would go ahead and go create widget. You would then select your widget and then you'd go add to viewport. Now, for the sake of showing this off, I'm going to add a basic crosshair UI that I have set up. Very simplistic, and it's not at all necessary for this tutorial, so you don't have to worry about that. So now that we've got this set up, what's happening is we're destroying the actor, removing all of its widgets. We then get a reference to the third person character, so that we can then possess it. And then we're setting our drone to active, to false, because it's no longer active. This will be used later on with some other things. We're then checking to see if reset, ignore, look, input 
Oops. Sorry, we're then checking. We're then making sure that we're resetting the ignore input that we set earlier so that our player character can't walk around. And then we're setting up any HUD elements that you guys have. So if you have like a, a basic UI that you have for your character, you can set it here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to come back into our event graph and we're going to find uh, the key that we're going to use. So in our case, it's the deploy drone one again. So we're going to call it on deploy, deploy drone. And then we're going to get our switch back to character and then connect that. And I'm just going to call this switch back to character. So now whenever we press our deploy drone key, which is set to one, it'll play this function, which will switch us back to our character. So if we now press one to bring out our drone, we can fly around. We can go into our little night vision mode. We can also now press one and the drone will be deleted and I'll come back into my player character. I can run around and I can deploy more drones and then I can switch back and I can deploy more drones and switch back. Anyway, you guys get what I'm saying here. Anyway, that is all for this episode. If you guys want to see more content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, the next episode will be setting up a rangefinder system so that it can detect how far it is that we're, uh, we're looking. So say if I was looking at this wall, there'd be a number at the bottom of my screen updating every time I move. And it would say the distance between my current, my little drone character and that wall. But uh, if you guys want to see any more content like this, or you want to see me recreate another game mechanic from a different game, let me know down below in the comments. Anyway, that's all for this episode. See you next time.